international, which for political reasons was not an easy game to referee. And he'll be in Europe next week refereeing a game between East Germany and the Soviet Union. Eli Ohana is the man that uh, everybody is looking for in the Israeli lineup as the man who might who might turn the occasion towards Israel and it has to be said that he is a fabulous player on his day and if he finds his form today the Australians might just have some problems. Johnny Warren, the tension is very high, the atmosphere absolutely electric. You have experienced some uh, uh, ex atmospheres of this kind in the past. Uh, you might want to comment on that. Well, on the surface, Les, uh, everything's against the Aussies here. 50 odd uh, thousand fanatical fans. They've uh, been warmed up here for the two hours prior to kickoff with some very nationalistic uh, feeling and songs and uh, chanting. And uh, on the surface, uh, one would think the Aussies are up against it, but I think the first 15 minutes or so, if the Aussies can just settle down, get a good early touch of the ball, the trend is that uh, it's 11 of you against 50-odd uh, thousand others, and it tends to weld the team together. The other aspect, too, is the longer these types of games go and the home team doesn't get on top, the crowd tends to uh, start to get on their back and start to have a negative effect on them. But if Australia can uh, not concede a goal in the first 15 minutes, and again, Drenchovic, Farina can work adequately up front, I think uh, Australia in with a big chance will win here today. And we're away in the World Cup qualifier at the Ramat Gan between Australia and Israel in 1989. And the referee has begun by giving a free kick to Israel which will be taken by Yehuda Amar by the way the only man well now the one, one of two men on the park who has not played against Australia in the past and Ohana carrying the ball out of play much depends on uh, how Ali Ohana stands up to the test of nerves, he is suspected to be slightly overweight. His uh, match practice has not been high in recent times. He has had some problems with his club Mechelen in Belgium. But the Australians just keeping possession for the moment, and that is the thing to do in the early minutes of such a tense game. There will be plenty of booze here today. The attempt to G up the crowd here at the Ramat Gan before the game has been quite exemplary. I have not experienced it anywhere before and the crowd has responded tremendously well. Avi Cohen will take his throw. And Steve Calderan gives away the free kick. down the track from 1985 in between of course Australia playing Israel twice but neither of those matches were played here long cross from Sinai the captain of Israel and another danger man there are about five of them as far as Frank Arrow is concerned the uh, overseas connection of Ohana Rosenthal and Pizanti Sinai and Avi Cohen are the men that impress him most Steve Calderan and Oscar Crino dropping back. He will be a key factor in the game as he has been for Australia in recent times. Alan Davidson, one of the survivors of the 1985 side. And Eddie Krinchevich goes down. The first 10 minutes, according to many observers, might just tell the story in either half. They're the crucial periods of time. Here's Charlie Yankon. Certainly one man who's not going to be unnerved by the occasion. A long free kick, looking for four ways. He gets a header to it, back it goes to Peterson, up towards Krinchevich, away by Amar. Yankos. High up in the air, a bit of an up and under. 
Le Arnold. Back for Yankos. Away to Wally Shavo to get a touch. And Oscar Krina making himself available. Davidi losing out. Here comes Peterson. Have the um, Australians got the numbers? Farina's down, no free kick. Yes, he's given it. So he lose with almost his first touch for Israel, giving away a free kick, and it could be a costly one. Oscar Krina can curl them from there, and Charlie Yankos can certainly hit them from there. Moshe Sinai organizing the wall. And it'll be Yankos to slam out and he's putting Ginsburg under enormous pressure. A good save in the end. Charlie Yankos fired it in. And Bonnie Ginsburg knows that he made a good save. It went past the wall, low and hard, a difficult save to make. Ginsburg did well. We're counting the minutes, and I'm sure you don't mind us doing that. It's a nerve-tingling first period of play. Five minutes almost gone now. Here's Amar. Now, Avi Cohen. Yeah, uh, Davidi forward. And again. The referee's whistle intervenes, and it's a free kick to the Israelis. Moshe Sinai can make some pinpoint free kick from here. When it goes towards Rosenthal, up in the air went Eddie Krinchevich. And his intervention probably put the Israeli strikers off. It's a goal kick. And there is the free kick up towards three players. It looked like Niralon was up there as well. And the height of Niralon rivaling the height of Eddie Krinchevich. And that's probably quite a deliberate, deliberate ploy by Frank Garros that whenever Alon goes up for a free kick or a corner, you'll probably see Eddie Krinchevich back to help out in the defense. And Alon with the header and a free kick against He's fitted in into the whole atmosphere of the Australian side very well in the last few days. One mixes with the players in the hotel lobbies and lounges and you can usually sense if there's a problem between the players, but there's certainly none here. Thornton style giving away the free kick. Now, players going up forward for Australia. There is the incident again. And Rosenthal penalised. Long one forward towards Krinchevich, the high ball attempted by Charlie Yankos. And uh, Johnny Warren, these early minutes are uh, testing ones for both sides. And both teams are standing up to it. Um, I don't think we should be dissatisfied with the Australians at the moment. No, I think understandably, Liz, both sides very, very nervous. It's very tense here. I think the number of free, uh, niggling free kicks already indicates uh, just how both sides have really haven't settled down. And uh, with the number of free kicks, and there's another one there, it's very hard for any pattern of play from, from either side uh, to get into their rhythm. But uh, so far, so good for Australia. They've had the best strike on goal, a brilliant save from Ginsburg off that Yankov free kick. Here's Amal. Rosenthal was the target, miscued ball, a dangerous ball too, to play it across the midfield. He's Wade. This was gone, the flag was up on the far side. An all-German team of officials here today, by the way. And Manfred Neumer, still one of the emerging referees in Europe, but a man with a high reputation. Forward by Pizanti. Krinčević and a free kick. Given away by Klinger. The crowd has gone silent for the moment, which was certainly not the case a few minutes ago. But 
at a rough estimate, some 50, 55,000 can be squeezed into this stadium, which, by the way, has no turnstile. In comes the free kick, away by Ilouz, and then by Tinayan. Now, Ohana, and away goes Pizanti, but it's too long, Charlie Yankos is there. Wade, Peterson, on the overlap is Steve Calderan. Behind, Eddie Krinchevic, and that will be a wasted attack. Good intervention from Peterson. Now Crino, it's four against four. Oscar Crino, the shot. Well, Bonnie Ginsburg came out. He didn't really have to do that. I think the ball was going wide. But Bonnie Ginsburg, with a considerable sense of purpose, wanting to make sure. So... I wonder if it'll be a costly one. It'll be in a corner to Australia. Oscar Fino taking his time about it. And the Israelis can ill afford to allow, uh, allow themselves to be caught in four, and a, four against four situations at the back. Crino to take the corner. The referee is telling him, or telling the photographers to move back, allowing Crino enough room to make his run up. In swimming ball, up goes Ginsburg, no problem. Ohana. With Davidson and with Davidi. Calderan, forward for Wade, it's too far ahead of him. Pizant is there first. From the Israeli point of view, certainly, cool-headedness is the key. minutes gone in the match and at the Ramadan it's Israel nil, Australia nil and most of the people analyzing what is about to come reckon that it won't be a nil or draw today both teams have good attacking qualities It has been a game of soft and start thus far. It's had its share of three kicks already. But nothing really malicious. And Sinai, as usual, will take the free kick to Rosenthal. With him is Wally Shavor, the man who's marking him. And Wally Rosenthal puts it behind for an Australian goal kick. So... 15 meetings between the two countries down the years. Wally Rosenthal has only seen a few of them in the recent past. But the great tradition between Israel and Australia continues. Five of those games have been won by Australia. Seven were drawn. So they've always been tight. And the goal difference in Australia's favour, 16 to 14. Amar is the sweeper. Header for Pizanti. Mm. It was a good idea, but the header not quite cushioned properly. David Pizanti had a good game against New Zealand here in the opening qualifier. Oscar Crino, sporting a brand new haircut, by the way. Calderan, Frank Farina, not too much in the game thus far. But that doesn't mean a thing when it comes to Frank Farina. We all remember his goal against New Zealand in that crucial qualifier in New Zealand for the Olympic Games. Eddie Klinchevich, shadowed by the even taller Mir Alon. Uh, Liz, for uh, Australia on the first corner kick everyone was worried about Krenchevich firstly and secondly Calderon and Australia have always had a very good tactic to hit way beyond the far post we'll see what Crino does here here it comes and a header from Frank Farina he's a bit pleased that he wasn't lucky I got yes uh, a good variation the first variation was to way beyond the far post uh, and again everyone worried about Krenchevich and Farina was able to sneak in good service from Crino there and Australia have got to vary these set plays Again, they will be expecting it to go to Trenchevich. Secondly, Calderon, and to vary it with Wade and Green are a good tactics from Australia. Yes, indeed. Uh, 
Jakob Grunman just uh, urging his men on on the sidelines. And it's important to consider the, of, uh, the value of a man like Eddie Klinkovic, uh, because not only is he a good player, but of course he's a player who's going to be paid an awful lot of attention to. And the Israelis get another free kick here. Ronnie Rosenthal issuing some instructions. And he's now staying back to perhaps partake in the free kick. Moshe Sinai is there as well. There's the view of the players. And plenty of back, men back for Australia. A four-man wall erected just behind them is Davidson. Ohana is right on the six-yard line. Here's Rosenthal. He wants to make a cross, and it's a telling one too. Up went Avi Cohen, and the Australians have survived. His way. Hamas. His auntie. He wants somebody to become available. Near Alon is. And back it goes to Ginsburg, who will switch, no doubt. But in fact, he'll uh, take the long one. Now, Sinai looking for Hana, who wants to turn his man, who's Calderan the cross in low but Arnold is back to help the Aussies out Frenchovic little flick to Peterson Credo he switches it as he always does to Alan Davidson advantage given good decision by the referee here's Farina away he goes past two men men in the middle Frenchovic and Arnold it'll go to Wade he will fire one in but balloons it over a good move the explosiveness of Frank Farina tested and Paul Wade was the finisher in the end. He'll regret not shooting more accurately. And may indeed have second thoughts about what he should have done there. But an excellent run by Frank Farina. Just in reiterating uh, or reinforcing your view, John, about Frank Farina's value in this game as perhaps a decoy. Yes, uh, Frankie, particularly on the flank where he's got extra space, can be so uh, destructive. He was then, but that was a good move from Australia. So far, they've put together probably the best two or three moves of the game. That was a one uh, built up with a nice flick from Krenchevich, the change of direction from Crino, the break from Farina. Perhaps the cross could have been better to Krenchevich at the first post, but uh, a good move for Australia, and so far, they have had the better move. Israel yet to put it together. Here comes Oscar Crino. He wants men in the middle to come up in support. At the right foot is crossed towards Arnold, away by Alon, Peterson down for Wade. And Wade got there first. Now, Pinchevich, Wade, and he's finally brought down. And the referee has blown earlier for an Israeli free kick. Huge atmosphere at the Ramad Gan. The players back in 1985 were complaining that they couldn't hear the whistle, such was the noise. Uh, it's not always that easy to hear it even for us up here. Miralon. Paul Stopper. Gilborg. 19 caps before today to his name. Here's Klinger. Harvey Cohen. Krino is the man who got the tackle in. He lose. And it'll be an Israeli throw. Shlomo Iluz, new man today. The trump card played by Yitzhak Schnell. Israeli fans will be wondering whether that will work. And obstruction. And it's gone against Oscar Crino. I'm not sure whether I understand that one. Davidson. Shovel. Then it goes for Ahmad. Ohana. Klinger. Davidson got in. Lovely ball to Peterson who's made himself available here. Australians are coming up in support. Here's Davidson. Two men. Farina back, Peterson, square is way, and a free kick to Australia, rather fortunate 
Now, Tudorson got the free kick going his way because it looks as though he may have lost the ball. But a little over-anxious tackling uh, from the Israelis there. It'll be a free kick and Manfred Neumann is now calling on the Australian physio, Pedro Ruz. And Peterson might just be a bit of a target man. It is said that he might be vulnerable to some hard tackling. But I think he's capable of uh, giving as much as he, he gets. Hopefully, John, that's not a uh, bad omen for uh, Australia. Well, a little bit lucky to get that free kick, but uh, there were two occasions before that, particularly the foul on Wade just outside the box should have gone Australia's way. Another chance for Yankos. Peterson, though, has been in good touch. And again, Australia looking uh, more at ease than Israel. I think the crowd is a good barometer of how well Israel are doing. <coughs> They've been uh, very quiet in the opening 15 minutes indicates uh, to me anyhow that they haven't put it together yet. Charlie Yankos leaving it for Credo, who curls it over. Certainly the strikes at goal, even though a couple of them have been from free kick, are in Australia's favour at the moment. Graham Jennings was up to warm up, by the way, while uh, Mickey Peterson was down with that injury, but he's up and OK. So a couple of free kicks, not bearing fruit for the Australians from rather tantalising situations. So far, here's Crino. A man greatly respected by the Israeli press. So, 20 minutes gone in the game between Israel and Australia, and it's still no score at the Ramat Gan. Klinger with a cross now. Away by Yankos. Avi Cohen. And the referee has given it again Israel's way. And Moshe Sinai will come back. There is the incident again. Well, it could have been anybody's free kick, quite frankly. Graham Arnold has retreated. Curling it towards Rosenthal. Nicely done. Shove ball was there, and now the whistle, no, he's let it go. Davidson, ball inside, finding Nidalon. And Arvid Cohen is the man who found himself in a rather surprising position with the ball, well inside the area. The Australian forced to give away the corner. And it'll be taken by Sinai, and we do remember Uri Valmurian scoring from a, directly from a corner once against Australia. It's an in-swinger as well. Touched on by Nidalon. In fact, it's gone, gone back for another corner off one of the Australians. And Sinai has been known to curl them into the net all the way from the corner flag. That would not be unusual for him. So the Aussies under some pressure at the moment. Nye again with another corner to the near post and away a safe way out by Charlie Yankos and these are tense moments for the Australian defenders almost everybody back away again by Yankos and this time for a throw the Australians can regroup at the back Alan Davidson among them he would have gone into midfield no doubt had the uh, Jennings come on for Peterson, but Peterson's okay. Here's Pizanti. Left foot across, up towards Ilu. And Arnold with a hasty clearance that finds Sinai, and Sinai rather surprisingly puts it out. Lomo Ilu going back to cover his position. Greeno just leading the ball a bit too far ahead of him. Couple of uh, curious decisions by the referee. John, I wonder what your comment is on that. Well, particularly the foul on Arnold. Uh, European referees really cracked down on the foot raise, but in that case, uh, the Israeli opponent also had his foot raised and uh, had a goal. 
as could well have come from those series of corner kicks resulted from that uh, would have been unfortunate times for Australia. But that was the first real pressure they've been under after 20 minutes or almost 25 minutes now. I think they could feel reasonably well pleased with their efforts so far. Both sets of defences uh, on top, but Australia so far being able to put it together a little bit better than Israel. Frank Farina putting some uh, pressure on David Cizanti. And if you've just joined us, within the 23rd minute of the qualifier between Israel and Australia, no score at the Ramat Gan. Here's Charlie Yankov. Maybe uh, Alan Davidson, not happy about what he did there. Now with his experience. Eli Ohana, who played so well for Mechelen in the European Cup Winners' Cup Final almost a year ago. That was a foul by Nidalon on Eddie Trinchovic, who came in rather hard with the elbow. And it'll be another free kick to Australia. Here's Calderan, or indeed uh, Wally Shavo. Rosenthal, the man that Shavo is marking, is doing a lot of running and it's Graham Arnold who puts it behind his control letting down letting him down there Mona Ginsburg we will remember him I'm sure he doesn't uh, want to remember it his grave mistake in that qualifier against New Zealand in 1985 but since then he's become a very steady goalkeeper and he's now one of the most capped players in this side with 19 to his name this is his 20th and now it's David Cizanti back from Queen's Park Rangers for the occasion and Eli Ohana who don't look alike don't look unalike those two Cizanti Ohana with him is Calderan Now. Intervention was by Cizanti. Now Ohana with his shoulder out again and reads it well. And this sort of pressure, Ohana hasn't looked too bad up till now, John, but of course the longer the time goes and the more they expect from him, the more he's likely to be vulnerable uh, to the situation. Well, I think there's the guy in the Aussie team with the toughest job is Steve Calder in marking Ohana. Uh, Ohana, a very tricky, uh, very good player on the ground. Steve's strength more in the air. The whistle has gone for a foul by Ronnie Rosenthal. The Aussies get a free kick. But I, I would have thought that Steve would have a very tough afternoon marking Ohana, but so far he's kept him pretty well under control. back there in numbers uh, defending really well again both defences uh, really on top and the longer this game goes the better it will suit Australia the crowd have been very quiet so far but I think come uh, second half and there's still no advantage to Israel in terms of score they're going to start to get on to the Israeli team a little bit uh, again it's the sign of the nerves that really have uh, dominated the game so far particularly for Israel I think the fact that they've gone into the game with an additional defender and dropped forward Dreek indicates the cautious approach they have to the match. Of course, it's a game they have to win. And they've opted for caution over a little bit of adventure by playing Dreek as an extra forward. Harvey Cohen tried to bring the ball out for Israel. Ronnie Rosenthal, backed by Calderan. Here is Alan Davidson. Frida wants it in the middle, but the view was blocked. For Davidson, here's Arnold. He tracks it. Harvey Cohen intervenes, intervenes well. Davidson looking for Krinchevich. With him is Neil Alon. Marking him very, very tight, shadowing him all the way. And Eddie Krinchevich putting the ball out of play. But even to neutralize a man like Neil Alon at the back is a plus in Australia's favour tactically. 
Little one-two between Avi Cohen and Eli Ohana, but it didn't quite come off. Now Ohana gets it back. Forward goes Klinger. Rosenthal. Play on, says the referee. Here's Ohana. Sinai. And now Pizanti wants to make one of those overlap runs within his four ways. And away by Shavo, offside, given against Ronnie Rosenthal. Maybe even uh, Eddie Ohana was in. And David Pizanti did so much damage against the New Zealand defence, not being able to do quite that today. Paul Wade has paid him a lot of attention today, as indeed Alan Davidson has done for uh, Harvey Cohen on this side. Yankov. And out it goes. The Australian having to regroup. Harvey Cohen will take the throw. Rosenthal trying to turn Calderan or Chavor. Here's Credo. Back to Davidson. Ambitious ball too far ahead of Princevich. Bizanti and Calderan is across with a good challenge. A round of applause from the gallery. Ohana losing out to Calderan. Here's Princevich finding space. Davidson. Pino not being able to get past Flinger. Now Sinai. Long cross in towards Ohana. Davidson. Peterson did that well. Arnold's in the middle three at the moment and he's getting it. And it's a great ball from Mickey Peterson. And it's too far ahead of four ways. So we're on the half hour at the Ramadan and in the match between Israel and Australia, it's still nil-nil. The crunch match of the Oceania group. Still to come. Australia's home tie. That'll be the last match of the series against Israel. Australia's away tie against New Zealand and Israel's away tie against the Kiwis. Deny. He's four away. He's going to be 27 tomorrow. Return ball from Crino, finding Hamas. He's been quite steady at the back for Israel. Sinai covering a lot of ground to get back there. When he goes himself, he's done his away. Man in the middle is Davidi, but the cross doesn't come quite as far. Quite a good threatening move by the Israelis. A good break. Bizanti in the middle of it. Good run by him. He hasn't had an opportunity to do that too often. Credo had to chase back to cover and intercede it so the cross couldn't come to Davidi. Charlie Yankos, the Australian captain. Back from Paul Salonica. Davidson looking for Farina. And that'll be an Australian throw. He moves looking after Frank Farina. Harvey Cohen. And the referee is given it Israel's way. And he's given a yellow card to Frank Farina. So that's the first Australian yellow card. Let's have a look at the incident again. Ohana and Farida coming in very hard with both legs, giving away the free kick, and he gets Australia's first booking in the World Cup qualifying campaign. Get Frankie a little bit late there, Les. Probably a little bit annoyed that he give the ball away. It tends to happen when you do that, you lose your head a little bit. Knew it was again, it's a, a fraction late, and uh, I don't think we can complain about a yellow card there. Not only late, a little bit high. So, Elio 
Ohana, who, by the way, has a yellow card himself, the only Israeli to have one, having collected it in that opening game against New Zealand. Here's Alan Davidson. That's an experienced man, played in so many positions for the Australian team down the years. The only survivor, really, from the pre-Frank Arrow era. Apart from perhaps Charlie Yankos in this current lineup. And Klinger will take the throw. Up towards Miralon. And no problems for Jeffrey Olver. What a baptism of fire he had at the ground four years ago. Coming in for the injured Terry Greedy in the first half. And bringing off one of the most memorable saves ever made by an Australian keeper in the second half to save Australia Paul Wade Graham Arnold with him is Davidi who wins the ball in the end and his auntie is the man coming away Peterson grabs it back for Australia off to Crino finds Paul Wade Left foot across, up towards Fritchevich, a header down to Arnold. He couldn't turn with it, the full value of Eddie Fritchevich there. Good pass from Paul Wade, and Eddie Fritchevich rising high to knock the ball down. And Bernie Ginsburg may well have been beaten that time, but the Israelis are away. Mitchell Peterson coming back to intervene, Moshe Sinai, the man denied. Here's Fritchevich, keeps it in for the Australians. He needs support now. Frank Farina with him in Plomo Ilus. And there's a sweeper behind. Right footed cross and nobody in the middle for Australia. Graham Arnold a bit further back. Oscar Trino winning the ball but back it goes to Bona Ginsburg. As far as time is concerned, I suppose that's in Australia's favour, John, the way things are going at the moment. Yes, I think that last incident, the cross from Wade to Krenkovic, is something that Australia have to do more in the second half. The beauty of Krenkovic, apart from his all-round ability, is that ability to hang in the air for those crosses. But so far, and we have to pay respect to Israel for limiting the number of crosses, but Australia really have to get a lot more crosses in for Krenkovic. That was good refereeing there. The crowd felt it was a penalty, but it was a good clean tackle from Peterson. Peterson and Crino starting to come more and more into, get, into the game and that's vital for Australia if they're to get that service to Farina and Frenchovic up front. Here's Peterson now to wave. Out it goes for an Australian throw. And this match is developing into one where the pressure will increase on the Israelis as time goes by. And the whistle's gone again against the Australians. Amar, I think, is the man down, the sweeper. And I'm not sure who the Australian culprit was. The referee has given a free kick uh, Israel's way. And 65,000 people or so at the Ramad Gan. Trina, the man, to give away the, the throw-in. We do remember John... World War Four here, about four, four years ago. It's not quite that today. The football has been quite good, even though the goals have not come. Well, I don't think the game's been allowed to really get under underway, uh, Les, because first attention, uh, it's a matter of the occasion, particularly for Israel, appears to have been too much for them so far. I think the, the crowd have been so quiet indicates how much they've been out of the game. The other thing is there have been so many free kicks that uh, neither side's been able to really put it together. But Australia, again, can be really well pleased with what, six or seven minutes to half time. They can go in at 0-0, sort a few things out, particularly the service to Krenchevich, which hasn't been there in the first half. Uh, we can look forward optimistically to uh, the second period. So, Israel get a throw on the far side. It'll be taken by David Pazanti. And Sinai is up, Davidi is up to help him out. That's towards Sinai. And the referee has given a 
free kick against Nicky Peterson and that referee is spotting just about everything that's going on very close to the action and it'll be Moshe Sinai not unpredictably to take the free kick curling it with the left this time it can do them with both feet Farina looking to prompt Alan Davidson. Back it goes for David Presenti. He's, he's not a bad crosser of the ball either. Away he goes. And there was, and no, no intervention by an Australian foot. And David Presenti is out of luck. Presenti, one of the players, Arrow feared. And I think the tactic of playing Paul Wade with him, uh, Les, has really paid off for Australia. Sure, Wade is not in the game as much as we'd all like. But his other role this afternoon is to restrict the overlapping of Pizzanti. And so far, uh, he's only allowed him three once. And that, of course, restricts the supply to the Israel attack in the air. Yes, indeed, John. Uh, Paul Wade played very much the same way against New Zealand in, uh, in Sydney. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Frank used that as some sort of rehearsal uh, for Paul Wade's role. Very much uh, hogging the right-hand touchline, either in attack or defence. And the Australians now get a free kick. Alon limps away and off the Crino over the ball and there are four Australians up front inside the area in curling it meant for Paul Wade here's Davidson and a lovely through ball upside flags up very quickly on the far side against Frank Farina well it was a classic case uh, Les, of the dead ball movement of not using Krenc uh, Krenchevich the ball service from Oscar. Really, they've got to get uh, that ball over the first line of defence, hang it up in the air, give Krenchevich a chance. I didn't feel that uh, was offside either. Fine ball from Davidson through. And uh, for my money, not an offside situation. OK, here's Avi Cohen. Not to be confused with the Avi Cohen of old. He captained Israel for such a long period of time. He's back at Israel now, by the way. No longer with Glasgow Rangers. And this Harvey Cohen is robbed by Graham Arnold. Here's Credo, man behind him. Davidson. Can he get some sort of a cross in as Klinger, Klinger comes to challenge? Here's Credo. Right foot across, up towards Finchovic. Down it goes to Serena. He couldn't quite get there. Farina says that as he uh, looks at Princevic, that he couldn't see the ball coming. Just five minutes to go in the first half in the match between Australia and Israel. Here's Ohana, and badly missing the cross. Perhaps the right foot is not his favourite one. But he will not forgive himself for that. Opportunities like that don't come too often. And it's been a match of stops and starts because of the many free kicks. A tight hand kept on it by referee Manfred Neumann. And but a, but a half which the Australians have survived well. A draw will not favour the Israelis here today. Even though many people have accepted, uh, are expecting the Australians to win. So it will be an intriguing second half still to come. It's Yehuda Amar, the sweeper, to take this free kick for Israel. The last time the two teams met was that rather torrid affair in New Zealand for the Olympic qualifiers. The atmosphere between the two sets of players rather more civilised tonight. Again, the whistle has favoured Israel. And in this massive stadium of old and new, a mixture of old and new really. The stand from which we are viewing the match is the new one. Opposite is a mass of old con concrete. This is unfair. Sinai, it was a deflection and it's gone over. A cracking shot for Moshe Sinai. 
And for a moment, the old heart took a flutter. Harvey Coyne went down. Moshe Sinai with a cracking volley. And for a split second there, Jeffrey Olver didn't know where the ball was. But it was deflected off an Australian, or a couple of Australians perhaps. As the Aussie commentators read the cry of relief. In comes in to his corner. Olver putting a hand to it. Hooked away by Arnold. What a valuable man he is. Back it comes. Now, Alon. Rosenthal. And away it goes for a throw-in of Eddie Klintovic. Now the crowd senses that there's some sort of inspiration here for Israel and gets behind them. Rosenthal tried to nod it in towards Eli Ohana, but it's the Australians who come away. Farida couldn't control it. Amar finds only Davidson. Farina. And the referee has not seen an obstruction there. So Farina looks across to Manfred Neumer. Posing the question. And we go into the final minute of the first half. And... It looked like a rather questionable challenge from behind by David Pizzanti. I'm not sure what the referee is given here, a throw or a free kick. But it was Steve Calderan who was uh, denied. As we approach the half-time whistle, John, some final comments on this period of play. Well, a very nervous uh, first half, particularly from Israel. They have seldom threatened, which... Uh can be attributed to a defined play by Australia. But as a game in football terms, the game really hasn't got going. And we're not going to complain about that. We'd probably settle for a full-time score of nil-nil. Rosenthal in, in the meantime, looking for Flinger. Behind him is Avi Cohen. And Davidson doing well. Princevich. Across it goes for Peterson. Arnold has made a run in the middle. But available on the far side is Paul Wade. Referee checks his watch. Pizanti intervenes on this one. And away comes Ahmad now for Israel. As both teams try to capitalise on the final second of this first half. Ronnie Rosenthal, who made a push on Wally Shavor as... Uh, that came out, the referee didn't see it and it'll be a throw to Israel some heated seconds here to survive for the Australians a long throw and away he goes for a corner so another to survive for Australia where Jeffrey Olver will have to be quite commanding under pressure from this huge gallery at the Ramad Gam. In comes the corner, driven in. And it's still in play. Now it's behind for another corner. So Moshe Sinai working hard. Practicing the in-swinging left footer. Long one away. Ohana, I think it was down. Harvey Cohen, it's still in play. And now the whistle's gone for a goal kick. And indeed, for the two teams to go into the dressing room. Gone. I'll just let you finish those comments. Well, apart from the final <coughs> few minutes, Liz, Australia in no trouble at all. Israel have really done their homework with those uh, corner kicks just beyond the far post. Australia are vulnerable there. But a first half Australia can feel pleased with. And uh, I think the game will open up uh, more in the second half. OK, thank you, John. As we watch that uh, final incident in the... Uh, first half between Israel and New Zealand. Let's remind you of the scoreline here. The Australians... And the tension here has been uh, very high at the beginning. I don't think we can uh, over-compliment the Aussies uh, by saying that they've done well in the first half. It was not a good first 45 minutes in the sense that it has been a lot of stops and starts. But... I'm sure that the Aussies will be satisfied by their performance. Our colleagues from Israeli television are saying that the Australians have been, have impressed them as a better team in the first half. 
and that certainly uh, was the view of Johnny Warren. So away we go in the second period. Australia in the yellow shirt attacking this time the goal to our right. And Jeff Olver, who had his work cut out in the first half. I wonder if he is going to be as busy in the second. Here's Illouz, who was busy marking Frank Farina in the first half. No doubt the job he will stick to in the second. And Eli Ohana. Match practice for him is the question mark. Whether he will last the distance. Here's Paul Wade turning back quite comfortably and coolly under pressure and Jeff Olver out well David Cazanti wondering uh, whether that move should have ended up with bearing more fruit and now Oscar Credo and Frank Arok spending a lot of time in Athens preparing his team on the way here more time than the Israelis expected arriving very very late on Thursday night and that's the foul on Nicky Peterson the Israelis will remember as having an excellent game against them in that memorable win by the Australians in Melbourne last year and that challenge has brought Australia a free kick the challenge from Davidi and Oscar Crino has come up to take this one Teddy Krincevich has already made a run and it's driven in by Oscar Krita which one thought may have surprised the goalkeeper but he came out well to save it and punch it away back it comes from Charlie Yankov Krita's up for it, didn't reach it now Avi Cohen Paul Wade is with him and it's the Australians who will get the free kick the uh, throw-in to be taken by by Alan Davidson Frank Farina with him in Shlomo Ilu and behind it goes for a goal kick Frank Farina is walking across with the ball looking for the corner the referee didn't quite fall for it and Yehuda Amar the sweeper takes the goal kick Calderan leaving that, he's with Ohana. Princevich. Sinai. Sizanti. Back heel to Sinai. He's gone past Arnold, the low cross in. Knocking into Charlie Yankos. And that's a free kick going Israel's way. Casino, the man giving it away. There it went. Well, it really could have gone either way. It was a free kick. It was a matter of heads or tails, really. And Sinai, who has been known to score from these sort of distances, by the way. Rosenthal overstepping the ball. And Moshe Sinai retreats to have a second go. Eli Ohana has made a run, tried to take his man with him, and it's locked it in. Away by Calderan. And now it's Ohana is brought down. The referee says no penalty. The crowd was looking for it. Eli Ohana went down. I thought he overdid the fall. And there it is, there was a dive in it. There was certainly a collision between the two. But the referee, quite content that there was no penalty. John, I'm sure you'd agree. Well, it was debatable, Les. I didn't feel it was a penalty. What I did feel, however, though, it was uh, offside before the ball, uh, Ohana was in an offside position when the ball was played to him. Harvey Cohen in for Rosenthal. That was a dangerous ball. And Ronnie Rosenthal was desperately close to the ball then. He's abusing Arvi Cohen for not passing the ball accurately. But it was really the rhythm of his run that robbed him of it in the end. The ball was well passed. In any case, the Israelis get a corner out of it. Five minutes gone in the second half. Still no score. 
the pressure momentarily on the Socceroos. Driven in, away by Klinkovic. Klinger. Sinai. Gets away from Farina. The right footed cross under pressure. Missed kick from Charlie Yankos. And now Amar driving it. Well, there's some inspiration here now from the Israelis. And the crowd are going to get behind the Israelis if they continue this kind of pressure. The Australians, after that missed kick from Charlie Yankos, fortunate to get away with it. And Amar, the man in the picture, was the man who had the final crack. But Charlie Yankos taking his time about taking the goal kick to cushion the adrenaline-inspired mood of the Israelis at the moment. Israeli free kick again. Davidi taking it quickly. Looking for Avi Cohen. All inside to Klinger. Ronnie Rosenthal's in the middle wanting it. Fido coolly away. Under pressure from Rosenthal. The flag's up and he's given it Australia's way. The linesman. Ronnie Rosenthal fouling off to Fido. Have a good view of it through the net. And Ronnie Rosenthal hooking. There was a final push on Ossipino is what uh, got the free kick for Australia. Uh, Charlie Yankos wants Rosenthal to get away the required distance. And taking the free kick. The crowd aroused by the Australians taking their time about things. Jeff Olver with the long one towards Finchovic who floats beautifully in the air for it. Arnold and well the referee has seen a free kick again and once again Israel's way Kamal Ohana and Calderan wins it and that's won by Avi Cohen from Graham Arnold Cohen with a long one Sinai Yankos is there quickly back Good work by Charlie Yankov. Keeping his head about things. Calderan. New man in the Australian lineup still. Steve Calderan, only his second cap today. What a game in which to get your second cap. But speaking to him at breakfast this morning, he wasn't too worried about things. Just another game to him. Harvey Cohen. And some of the fans way up in the stand on the far side there was quite a scramble for tickets today as all sorts of uh, measures were taken by the fans to get some and a good crack by Wade oh Wade left foot up that wouldn't have missed by very far at all he's the birthday boy tomorrow 27 he turns that's a great left foot up there was a dip on it and look at it look how close it came to the far post. Well, apart from the free kick early in the game that Bona Ginsburg had to save so well, the closest the Australians have come to scoring. But they are capable of doing it. The referee has now given a free kick to Israel. And for the game's sake, one tends to hope the pattern is not repeated of the first half where we've had quite a generous dose of free kicks to interrupt the game Amar away by Krenchevich look where he was looking for Arnold Amar Arnold's away Farina's on the right and he couldn't get it away to him and an important interception from Amar Avi Cohen Good ball down for Flinger. Rosenthal in up front, but it was towards Pizanti. He was making an overlap run. And Paul Wade doing the good work for Australia. The floodlights are on at the Ramadgan. 
We're about, about six o'clock here at the moment and getting reasonably chilly. Pizante. Looking for Avi Cohen or indeed Sinai on the far side. And away come the Australian, Trinchevich. And he's fooled Amar. Amar completely fooled by the run. But the cross was not accurate enough for Frank Farina. Eliohana. And the through ball. Rosenthal goes down. Free kick given. Wally Chavo, the man to bring him down. Rosenthal looks at the referee, has a word to Ivy Cohen. It was a great ball through to him by the right back. And Wally Chavo dismantling the legs of Roddy Rosenthal as he ran for the ball. It was a very scary moment for Australia. So Wally Chavo, by the way, got booked for that. So that's Australia's second yellow card tonight and the second yellow card of the competition. Here's the free kick then. Rosenthal and Finai wants the wall back. Man on the line for Australia, right on the goal line next to Jeffrey Olver is Charlie Yankos. Wanting to co cover the possibilities of the bent free kick. You never know which way he's going to take it. Sinai outside of the foot. But four ways. Comes to Australia's rescue. Forward. And offside, well offside. Were two Israelis in fact, Avi Cohen and Eli Ohana. And Avi Cohen has hit his share of the game today. In fact, this uh, one was to pick an Israeli. He stood out from the others. It was him. Olva with a long one forward. Looking for Graham Arnold. With one in the air by Davidi. Charlie Yankot. Yankot again with the header forward. Here's Frank Farina. Behind him is Oscar Trino, but Farina's away and he carried it over the line. And his momentum took him well away. In fact, he took the ball well away with his momentum. The referee had a word to him, accusing him, no doubt, of time wasting. Klinger will take the throw. In this, in this early session in the second half it has certainly been the Israelis who have looked more threatening just a matter of whether they can track the Australian defence and if they can't just how long that will last Hamas Davidson Israeli throw no, Australian throw the referee, the linesman gave it the other way and thought for a moment it was a free kick but it's a throw and another Peterson Davidson Amar there are decoy runners all over the place here Avi Cohen is one of them Charlie Yankos for the first timer away. Right into the chest of Eddie Krinchevich. Here's Graham Arnold. Four ways. Back he goes for Peterson. Up towards Krinchevich. Out of play. The flag was up. The whistle's gone. It'll be an Israeli throw. And the man down is Eddie Krinchevich or Ostrofino. He's getting up now. 
there was the challenge. It happened after the ball had gone out of play. The Israelis got the throw. Amar. Looking for Rosenthal. He's faithfully shadowed by Wally Shavall, but loses out. Back to Joe Sinai for the first time up. Well blocked. Bizanti wanting to get the cross in and sterling work again by Paul Wade. He'll earn his birthday present tomorrow. If he survives this tussle that he's having. And a very crucial intervention there. And finally it was Paul Wade. Australian down. Some pressure from the Israelis now, John. Something for the Australians to soak up. Well, the, the match hasn't been in Australia's hands at all in the second half, Les. They've been under pressure for the first time in the game, with the exception of the last few minutes before half-time. Uh, it's very easy to sit here and say what they should do, but uh, basically they need to spend more time with the ball, put together a few passes. They just are not in touch with the game at all. Fine to play out time, but... Uh, Really, the quickest way to play it out is put a little bit more pressure back on Israel. But so far, we haven't been in the game at all in the second half. And to do that, uh, really, uh, a lot more time has to be used with the ball. We've hardly put any passes together. Seldom threatened at the other end, except with the exception of the way free kick or the way the way shot at goal. The corner comes in for Israel. And Pizanti tries to curl it to the outside of his left. But in that particular incident, Charlie Yankos and Paul Wade, two Australians getting a knock. Paul Wade is still limping a little. And the Charlie Yankos seems to be okay. Significant there, Les, that the referee allowed the, the game to go on while Wade was still down. And there, as soon as Wade's out of the game, Pizanti has a strike on goal. Charlie Yankos is trying a little ploy of wanting the short one from Jeff Olver. The referee has a word to him. Not against the rules, of course, but the referee may have thought Charlie was killing time by doing that. He's off to Credo. Peter Fenn. Finchovic. And too much power behind the pass but Davidson got there held around out of play and just what Johnny Warren was referring to a little bit panicky some of the clearances of the Australians rather than being cool-headed and looking for a man who's available just clearing them and that just puts pressure back on yourself here's Sinai dangerous cross for Hannah and Peterson's there for Australia. Now Krinchevic. Challenge from behind. Re referee says it was legal. Amar. Ohana. Little touch. Trino and Wade. And back to Jeff Alder safely. On the other side is Charlie Yankos making himself available. Charlie did well to find him. Here's Peterson. Flick on from Trinchovic didn't come off. All he needs is one half chance, Eddie Trinchovic. Over 30 goals in League and Cup this season in the Belgian First Division. But he does need good service. And with the pressure on the Australians at the moment, that service obviously is not forthcoming. Well, Steve Calderan penalised that time. There is the replay on Eli Ohana. It looks a little late. One doesn't know just how much of it Eli Ohana has uh, amplified, but the referee intend to give Israel the free kick. So again, danger for Australia. Once again, Sinai, Harvey Cohen is there as well. As is David Pizanti. Sinai is instructing them. 
And it's a short one, through ball. And he's given a penalty for a handball against Alan Davidson. I didn't think it was deliberate. The ball bounced up on Alan Davidson's hand. So quickly, it ricocheted off his foot and went onto his hand. Now the Australians have to control themselves, but I'm quite certain it was not deliberate. Wally Chavo giving the referee a piece of his mind. He's already got a yellow card. He ought to be quite careful. There is the incident again. Of course, it is in slow motion. And, well, difficult to tell from that replay. But certainly, in, at real speed and at the time that it happened, I was quite certain that it was accidental. The referee has to make it, his mind up in a split second. And now he's ushering the Australians away. So, the moment of the game so far. Ohana will be taking the penalty. And Jeff Olver is under enormous pressure here. Eli Ohana. And it's put it away. Israel lead 1-0. With 21 minutes gone in the second half. There are the fans celebrating. 21 minutes gone in the second half. A couple of fans have run onto the pitch. Trying to congratulate Eli Ohana. this the turning point of the game Elio Hanna sending Jeff over the wrong way Olver made a valiant attempt to turn back and parry it but it was too late so for the moment perhaps not in the way that he expected Elio Hanna is the hero Johnny Warren well, it's just a matter of whether it's a penalty or not. The ball did strike Davidson's hand. Uh, I'm, I'm sure in a lot of penalty decisions, players don't deliberately mean to handle the ball, but penalty is still given. In those circumstances, I, I don't feel we can complain a lot. But I feel the goal will do Australia a lot of good because they've come out in the second half and allowed Israel to take the game to them. And I think Australia is a much better side when they play their normal game, which is to go at the opponent. I feel they've looked at, at the clock too much to use it up. Been, they were the better side in the first half and I think now that they've got to come out that uh, Australia will be better for it You took the words right out of my mouth John, I couldn't agree with you more um, to try and kill time with 40, 45 minutes still to go can be quite fatal in a football match and the goal will at least spur the Australians on Well I think in the first half Liz, when they, they sure they played it very cautious but they still took the, the game to Israel, they were, they were all over them, but uh, since the second half they've come out and just, uh, again, just used the clock without playing and uh, really have now have paid the penalty. Okay, here comes Davidson, much depends on how the Israelis will react to their own goal of course, and how the two teams allow each other, if you like, to play. It's now a goal kick to Israel. And it might just be a very entertaining remaining uh, 20 minutes or so. Well, there's a change of attitude already, Les. Scotty Oller and Shaw starting to warm up. Indicating that uh, Frank is going to bring him on an extra forward. Charlie Yankos hurrying back. Rosenthal is behind him in a great hurry. And he's a very quick man. But he's gone out for an Israeli throw. The pressure for the moment comes back on Australia. and leaves it. And I think it's Klinger on that far side who's going to take this throw. Lofting it in. Away by Jankos. Here's Davidi chasing this one. Marina. It goes to Charlie Yankos. He's going to look for a man. It's the long one towards Princevic. Alon. David.
Davidson. He's got to be mighty displeased that he made a contribution of any sort to that Israeli goal. Here's Farina. Through two men. Couldn't get past the third. He was the sweeper, Amar. Peterson. Back for Shavor and Charlie Yankos. Here's Davidson. Wade. Rosenthal. Wants to take men on and run at them. He found Sinai on the left, overlapping his Pizanti. There he goes. Too long, I fancy. No, he gets there, but puts it out for a goal kick. We have 20 minutes to go in the big one at the Ramad Gan, and it's 1 0 to Israel. The crowd has suddenly come alive, and quite naturally. Israel didn't do much to please them in the first half. Eddie Klintovic is fouled by Slomo Iluz. I should say by Niralon. And he goes to take up his position as a target man inside the penalty area. Ostafrino will take the free kick. Behind it is Charlie Yankot. He might just decide to give it the old hammer Dri driving the ball as hard as Charlie Yankos does might not necessarily score you a goal but the ricochet from it might help you out Ostrofino wants the wall back Charlie Yankos gonna, is going to attempt it here's Yankos curling it outside netting Oh, it's gone in! It's gone in! It's a goal! Charlie Yankos has put it in! An unbelievable free kick which has left this gallery absolutely stunned with silence. It sailed around the wall in such a death way that one thought it hit the outside netting. But in fact, it's a goal for Australia. This is a better angle at it. Hitting it hard, driving it into that corner on the far right of the goal and Foley Ginsburg was nowhere so it's 1-1 one, one, Johnny Warren unbelievable goal from Charlie Yankos I agree with you I didn't think it had gone in I thought it was impossible to score from that angle and of course the crowd uh, the deadly silence uh, supported that view but what a great goal from Yankos Australia now back in it and it reinforces the thought I hope now that they just don't go back and try and use up the clock go at Israel, it's such a, a better side when they do that, it's a natural game for them and that the game is here for them to win should they be very positive in their attitude towards it so, Moshe Sinai trying to rescue Israel's fortune with his free kick driving out and that was ever so close as well low and hard with a little curl on it that headed towards the far corner it's not all over yet and we have quite some game in our hands now. Moisha Sinai absolutely hitting it with awesome power as well as putting a little curl on it. Ilouz was coming in just to get a toe to it, perhaps, but he was nowhere in sight. Punched away by Olver the corner. Here's Pizanti. Wants to get around Trino. Manages to cross in. Away by Yankos. Good work. Arnold. Davidi. And the long one away by Wade. No more than a clearance. And valuable second for Paul Wade. So the Australians didn't take long to reply. And it was intriguing. Those few seconds before that free kick was taken. As Ostrofino and Charlie Yankos no doubt debated just who's going to do it. They opted for the big one from Charlie. With memories of Argentina in the back of their mind. And it came off. So Charlie Yankos scoring his seventh goal for Australia in full international. In his 49th appearance. He's just one game off the 50. 
And it'll be a throw to Israel. Away by Calderan. with the high one and that referee says a sandwich on Klinger free kick to Israel and Sinai Pinchovic is up there to try to rescue the Aussies and what's the given now Blown his whistle. I'm not sure what he's given. I think he may have given an Australian free kick. And the Israeli physio has gone on, and he's, as is Pedro Ruz. And I think it's Harvey Cohen, the Israeli, who's down. And it looks like Charlie Yankos for the Australian. There is the incident again. Players coming Madrid. And there was a clash on the floor between Arby Cohen and Charlie Yankos, and right. both of them stayed down. Arby Cohen deserving a yellow card there. He came in late, he went over the top, and hit Yankos. I thought for a minute because Charlie did retaliate uh, slightly. So perhaps the referee only saw the second incident. It's certainly a bad foul on Charlie Yankos, and for mine, uh, Arby Cohen deserves a yellow card for that. Okay. So it'll be a free kick to Australia. Which will be taken by Charlie Yankos. And the minutes pick away at the Ramadan. And Alan Davidson utters Ari Cohen away. Because it's mine, it's my throw. So a great sense of urgency in the game for about 10 minutes there, which brought us two goals and quite a bit of entertainment. And quite a bit to remember by the 50,000 fans here. And Hamad with the free kick for Israel. Away by Yankov. And now the Israelis are going to make a substitution. It'll be Dritz, the striker, to come on. He's the man who was named in the original lineup last night. But the two coaches changed their minds and uh, has brought in Ilouz, the centre back, in place of Dritz, the striker. Uh, the question now is just uh, whom Zeke will be playing. And it's Davidi, the midfielder, who's coming off. So, the number 17, Eddie Zeke, comes on to make his 15th appearance for Israel. And the man who has played against Australia before is Rosenthal. getting his first touch and there's a clash between Savor and Rosenthal. Savor already. So the we think for the Australians now tactically there is an extra striker. It left some room at the back. We shall discuss those tactical changes with Johnny Warren in a second, but here's a free kick by Moshe Sinai again. Lost it in. Cleared, but not far enough. Now Sinai chipping it in this time. Away by Calderan. Arena. Wait. 
got away from one. Back for Credo. Wade again. And Kizanti back for Amar. He lets it go. So it'll be an Australian corner. And we have not seen too many of those lately. So we shall see how the Australians will regroup for this corner. But a bad mistake here by Amar, who simply didn't read where the goalkeeper was. Thought he was behind him. And in fact lost his bearings because he was a lot further out from goal than he thought. In the event, he gave away a corner, which will be taken by Mickey Peterson. And Dinsburg is ready, as are a couple of Australians, three of them now, four of them in the penalty area. Up towards Trinchevez, or oh, Fido in fact, with the header. Good header, worrying the goalkeeper, who had to scramble across to save it. And the Israelis go on the break. But in fact, it's Peterson now to Credo. Peterson again, and Farina. The Australians going at the Israelis at the moment. And Farina still has the ball. The linesman put his flag up. The whistle's gone. I'm not sure what it was. Farina looks at the linesman. And the referee originally had allowed play to go on from the distance that he was from the incident let's have a look at it again but the linesman has intervened there's Farina he goes down scrambles up to go again and somehow the referee has given a free kick to Israel well that I cannot understand it may have been a man in offside position but what that had to do with Farina's run I do not know in any case, Johnny Warren, tense moment at the moment. Uh, what would be the tactical changes to allow for the extra Israeli strike at the moment? Well, it will be quite simple for Australia. They'll just drop Davidson back into a more defensive role. Davo, of course, he can play anywhere, but particularly uh, in the defence. It's nothing strange for him. And it's a good change for Australia because it's going to leave a little bit more room where we can get uh, control of the middle of the park and go at them. The incident uh, before where they forced the corner and then the run there. I, I agree with you there, Liz, that I didn't think it was a foul. But Australia, again, just looks so much better when they take the game to Israel. And it's a, a much more effective way, to me, to use up the clock than to sit back and to, to just waste time. Australia is a better team nowadays than just to waste time. And with just 10 minutes to go, the idea would be to still have a little bit of a go at Israel with the hope that they could get the two points out of this match. And there's a foul again. Well, in the meantime, John, uh, midfielder Eli Cohen has come on for David Pizzanti, who's gone off as after that uh, clash with Frank Farina. So he will take no further part in the match. And that's uh, some sort of a key to what might happen to the Israeli attack in the future. But away they come. The captain who has to rally his men. This is a match the Israelis need to win and want to win. A draw is not something that will suit them at all here. They've only got away matches to come. They will have three matches, three points from two home matches, and that's hardly satisfactory. Amar intervening. Frank Farina made a very good run uh, diagonally across the uh, face of the 18-yard box. Graham Arnold was looking for him, but couldn't find him. Now, off the Trino. Charlie Yankos. Yankos again. We have seven minutes to go in the match. And it's 1-1 between Australia and Israel. And a free kick going Australia's way. And Paul Wade leaves it for Oscar Trina, who says that the ball should be put back to where it was originally. Here's up to Creed. We're looking to curl it behind two of his strikers. Wade. Trying to put it towards Arnold. Mick Peterson. Look, look for Wade on the other side. And find him. First time. Goes up.
possession. Travel back inside. right on the corner flag. <laughs> Having made their two substitutions. <laughs> and Wade with a long throw in. Grinchevich. Overhead and gone away for another corner. They shot four. He manages to and now brings down foul. Yellow, it's got to be dead, I fancy. For what is shovel? For what what is shovel? Slamming back to make up for his mistake. And impeded. picture at the moment but there's a fan on the pitch and he's, he has blown and now he's down down gone on some sort of a sound strike the players the Israeli players and one can understand they're under and the fool comes onto the pitch and tries to intervene the one thing the Israelis don't want out of their rhythm Fighting for the last chance in the remaining seconds of injury time. So the referee is going to have a drop ball here as that Has the full time it has been drawn 1-1. by Ali O'Hara. Replied by that. And Charlie. That fabulous free kick of his, which has so many people fooled here. Looks like it hit the right netting, but it curled in for one of his most memorable goals. So Australia leads Israel with a one-all draw. And Elio...